So I know it feels like a far way out, but I am going to talk about 10 horror books that are coming out in 2025. The books are starting to get announced and there are several that I'm really excited for. So I thought I'd give you an early preview, letting you either pre-order them, request them from your library, or just simply put them on your Goodreads list. So if you're interested in that, if you want to stick around, subscribe, all of those good things, let's get started. Now first starting in January, but keep in mind that these dates are subject to change and definitely can, especially this far out, and are also based off North American release dates. So the the first book I want to talk about for January is Witchcraft for Wayward Girls by Grady Hendrix. He is a very iconic author. I've read most if not all of his backlist books at this point and this is one that is set in the 1970s that follows a young woman who finds herself pregnant, a teenager actually, so her family sends her off to this home to finish up her pregnancy the last three months and there she is very much pressured to give up her child and deals with the guilt of all of the societal shame that goes along with it. Thankfully she ends up making friends with some of the other girls that are there. One day a librarian shows up with a book and in that book containing it is information on how to perform witchcraft and so with that information they take it upon themselves to go and seek power that they don't otherwise have and the story goes from there. This one sounds fantastic in terms of a premise. I'm highly anticipating it. I've been hit or miss with Grady Hendrick's work in the past but if there's ever a premise that is going to be a five-star Grady Hendrix book for me. This one has the greatest potential for that. I'm dying to get my hands on it. I want to say highly recommend but I haven't read it yet but hopefully it lives up to my hype and I know there's a lot of you watching this that are also excited for it too. And also in January we have Madman by Matt Serafini and this is a story that follows a teenager named Betsy who is in her last year as a camp counselor. She is about to move on, has to deal with what to do after high school. She's also dealing with complicated teenage love and all of that. that involves and in the camp a story is told at the campfire and somehow it unleashes this slasher killer this farmer with an axe who is coming after her and her friends and of course it turns into an action-packed slasher adventure that is very much I assume going to be a reflection of the movies of the 1980s so very much excited for this one I've read this author before I want to include at least one indie author on this list because I think that if you haven't yet if you love horror and have only read the big buzzy releases by the big publishers. You're missing out. There's so much in the indie scene that I recommend. I've done a video on it before talking about some of my favorites and it's another one that definitely has some potential here. Then in February we have The Pink Agave Motel and other stories by V Castro. This is the only short story collection I'm going to focus on on this list and this is one I couldn't resist putting here because of the fact that I've come to really love V Castro's work. She tends to write really fierce feminist stories that really push the line. Often they have kind of a sexy angle to them which is always a little bit fun and as well. She always incorporates Mexican folklore and mythology into her work and I've heard a great early buzz about this one. It looks amazing, sounds amazing, and I just have to check it out for myself. If there's one short story collection I'm going to read next year, it'll be this one. And also in February we have Something in the Walls by Daisy Pierce and this is a story that follows a child psychologist who is brand new to her field. She's looking for experience so when she gets the opportunity to go and work with a 13 year old girl who says that she's being haunted by a witch, she eagerly takes the job. She has to go to a remote village and there she believes that she can help her. Of course, as you can imagine, anytime there is someone eager to solve the problem, things are supposed to go horribly wrong and I can't wait to see that hot mess of a conclusion because this book sounds fantastic. Next is The Buffalo Hunter Hunter by Stephen Graham Jones and this is a story that is of course again by a very popular horror author and so I think a lot of you are going to be excited for this one. In this one it's set in the past and follows a priest who is transcribing the life of a vampire who lives near this Blackfoot reservation and is haunting it looking and seeking justice. This one sounds like a great premise. I love the fact that it's going to incorporate a historical piece which I think is really an interesting part of history and definitely has this horrors on its own even without anything supernatural happening. I think that this author is just one who brings in a great indigenous perspective while also again not shying away from the horror, the gore, and all of those things that we are looking for, at least a lot of us are looking for when we pick up a horror book. So very much like a lot of you I'm going to be anticipating this one, dying to get my hands on it, and of course I will let you know I will come back with a review as I plan to do with all these books 
just it'll be a while because it's not 2025 yet is it next in March is Rick it by Alex Gonzalez I really hope I pronounced that right this one follows a young man who is suffering from grief and guilt after an accident that has happened and so in order to deal with that or perhaps not deal with that he goes on to the web and starts looking up really gory violent videos he ends up getting sent a particular video that shows the accident that he is dealing with and from there he goes to seek out more videos on these ugly topics following videos that show accidents and murders and so forth and so as you can imagine this just spirals downwards there's a question of who is the person on the dark web that is sending him all of these videos and I'm really excited for this one because as I've mentioned before often I find that a lot of horror stories are drawn towards the past like some of the ones I mentioned before and instead this one is going to be ultra modern dealing with the internet and the ugly side the dark web and the internet and I'm really excited to see how they're going to mash together these really modern topics with a good old-fashioned horror story and I think it's going to be very psychological and again I find that these are often the scariest because it's different reading something said in the past because in my mind I always feel separated from the characters but instead someone who is browsing the internet and gets to some weird places feels oh too possible and just a really terrifying concept there. Next is Blood on Her Tongue by Joanna Van Veen and this is a book that is set in the Netherlands in the late 1800s and we follow a sister who is seeing her other sister, her twin, getting quite sick and the doctor comes and actually says that she might be crazy, she might be insane and possibly has to go to an asylum. However, the sister believes there's something else going on, starts to investigate and within time it appears that there is something more perhaps super natural going on perhaps the child is possessed and the story goes from there I try not to give away too much of the plot but I do think that it's worth knowing that this appears to lean into the side of a possession story which is one of my favorites and it's something I'm always personally seeking out in books and I know a lot of you are too that's just the setup and I imagine there's gonna be a lot more to it I just think that possession stories for me are very psychological they always have that kind of religious aspect that can be drawn in or perhaps not in this case we'll see and I'm just really looking forward to seeing what this one's all about and it has again great potential to be a favorite for me and still in March we have the haunting of room 904 by Erica Wirth and this is a story that follows a woman whose sister was a psychic she had the ability to commune with the dead however at the beginning of the story right in the setup she dies and that gift passes over to her sister now we fast forward and the sister uses her power to become a private investigator particularly for those with supernatural events she is called in by the owner of a hotel because in his hotel tell every year girls die and regardless of where they were situated what room they were put into they always are found dead in room 904 and so she's brought in to investigate what is happening and I think it ties in with her own past and history and it sounds great of the books on the list I will admit this one is more of a supernatural thriller compared to some of the other straight up horror books but it was labeled as horror on Goodreads and other shelves that I saw so I'm gonna go in with the hope that this book is gonna get messy and dark and really scary and hopefully none of us are disappointed there, right? Now moving into April, we have Senseless by Ronald Malfi, a personal favorite author of mine. And this is a story that is set in Los Angeles. There has been a brutal murder of a young woman. Her body's been found mutilated and the detective looking at the case notices that this is quite similar to a case that happened before. And so soon enough, the press gets involved and declare it to be a serial killer and they have to deal with that. However, the detective also has a messy past. It sounds like he is in some way connected to the husband of the first victim. And so that is going to Add a whole another layer to the story. I don't know what that's going to be. This is one that I'm very much picking up and excited for based off the author. I think the premise has potential, but I really need to see where it goes. But if there ever is an author who is a great storyteller, I've said it too many times on my channel, but I'm going to say it once more. Ronald Melfi just tells really good stories and I never get tired of his work. I do recommend him. I think he is an easy author to get into, especially if you've only read things like Stephen King. I think he's a really accessible one to pick up next. And finally, the last book on this list is also supposed to come out in April, and that is The Cut by C.J. Dotson. This is a story that follows a woman who is on the run from her abusive husband with her young child. She ends up going to this motel where she gets a job, and when she is there, strange things start to happen. One of the incidents involves a guest disappearing. The owner of the hotel just says that they moved out early, but she thinks that there is more going on, and because she has this past with her husband, or ex-husband in this case, she no longer can tolerate being gassed 
gaslit. So instead of just believing and going along with what she is told, instead she decides to investigate for herself. Now this in terms of a premise is something I've seen before in other places, but the fact that it brings in that DV angle I think is really going to make the story so much more complex. I love the fact that it really is taking back the narrative and discussing the gaslighting that typically happens in these domestic situations. And so for that reason alone, I'm expecting this one to be a really strong character story and I'm highly anticipating it. I hope it really leans into the horror elements based off of what's going on, which it sounds like it will from some of the other things I've read online. And I'm very excited for this one, another one that has clear favorite potential. So that's it for this video here. I'd love to know of the books I talked about. Which ones are you planning on checking out in 2025? And of course, I'd love to hear your other most anticipated releases. Keep in mind that if I didn't mention them here, it's probably because they haven't been announced at the time of filming this. If you look at the timestamp on the video, this was filmed really early in 2024. And so if there's a big buzzy horror book I didn't talk about, just assume that I'm excited for it. I want to read all the big buzzy books and that's usually my general rule when it comes to fiction. So if you do want to stick around and subscribe for a lot of horror reviews as well as dark fiction, thrillers and other true crime etc. Definitely hit that button. You can also hit the button to chime that little notification bell. You can hit the little thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this. It does take quite a while to prepare these videos so I do appreciate people who stick around and watch this because it is a lot more time consuming compared to a lot of the other content I put out. But if you stuck around I appreciate that. Thank you so much and I'll hopefully talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.